Uh, later on, we'll have uh, Dr. Apollo to speak to us on tonight's topic. Is it different this time? But I thought it's important before I hand over the stage to Dimensional that I talk a little bit about the context of why we are doing events like this. Not just this event, but events like this. About two weeks ago, I had the opportunity to be invited by Morningstar China to be in Guangzhou to speak to the investment advisory industry. I also did a closed-door meeting with the key opinion leaders in China and also the industry leaders as well as the government officials in Guangzhou. I also took some media interviews. And throughout all these sessions, the one key concern that the Chinese had was how can advisors help clients weather through this volatile period and help them get the needed returns. Because many of us know that the Chinese, they are going through a very bad patch today. Three years of financial markets downturn, property market not doing very well. In fact, when we were there, a lot of young people, they have lost confidence because many of them, they cannot get uh, jobs. And if you have been here in our annual client event last month, uh, Dr. Peng Chen, our senior advisor, spoke also about the Chinese situation. But this concern is real and is important because if as advisors, we cannot help you weather through volatile period and we cannot help you stay invested for the long term, it's going to be a problem. We know that if you invest in the right thing, in the long term, things will be okay. You will get your rewards. But a tough thing is how do you go through very choppy periods in the short term? So how? How do Provident, how do we do it? Well, there was a morning star study, and I actually wrote about this just yesterday on the business time. And this study uh, is called the My the Gap study. And Morning Star does this study every year, or not every year, from time to time since 2005. And in the 2023 study, they did a, a sort of um, like a research on six major markets. This is not US. So the six major markets are Australia, Hong Kong, Ireland, uh, Luxembourg. Singapore and the United Kingdom. And you can see, so if you look at the blue color bar, um, I don't think this is a pointer, I'm not gonna risk pressing it, but you see the blue color bar, okay, that's the total annualized return of the funds. And there are thousands of funds in there, so average return, right? Annualized return of the funds. And the green bar is what investor actually they got. And then of course, the red one is the gap. And you can see that every single market in Australia, in Hong Kong, Ireland, Luxembourg, Singapore, and the UK, in every market, there is a return gap. And what that means is that investors are not getting the returns, uh, the same return as the fund. Now, even if the funds give good returns, the investors are getting lesser of it. What about those funds that are not even performing? And like I said, it's a real concern. So how we do it here at Provident, and many of you will know because I write about it and I speak about it very often. But so just bear with me for those of you who have heard this many times. But for those of us who have, um, don't find this familiar, at Provident, our wealth planning and our investment approach is anchored on this philosophy called the philosophy of sufficiency. This philosophy of sufficiency was developed in 2010 after the GFC of 2008. The philosophy of sufficiency is also known as the philosophy of enough or the philosophy of knowing what is enough. It is also the philosophy of contentment. But the question is, what is contentment? Well, contentment is when you no longer crave or desire anything that you don't already have. It is not a no-choice situation. Contentment is not resigning ourselves to the fate it is not a passive acceptance of things. Rather, it is a conscious choice. It's very intentional to enjoy, appreciate, and accept what you have while giving up the craving of the things that you do not have. And therefore, it requires us to know what is important to us in our lives and accepting that we cannot have everything. That's what contentment is. Because of that, it requires us to really take time to consider what are the things that I must have. And so at Provident, in our advisory process, it is intentional that in our discovery meeting, we try our best 
And it's not just that one discovery meeting in your entire engagement with us. We do our best to help all our clients to be clear about their non-negotiable life goals. In the past, we do not have a vocab for that. Since last year, I found a vocab for it and it comes from the Japanese word ikigai. Ikigai, two words, iki and gai. Iki is daily living, gai is worthy. So ikigai means your daily living, doing things that are worthy or worth your time. Sometimes the Japanese say, this is what are the things you wake up for. I call ikigai your non-negotiable life goals. So in contentment, we first decide what are these non-negotiable life goals. And as an advisory firm, we want, to hope, we want to help our clients have clarity on what these things are. And once we know what these things are, then we want to make sure that we deliver enough returns in order for you to be able to achieve your Ikigai goals. But what is the definition of enough returns? I've been asked this question even in the firm. I mean, what is enough? When it comes to investment, the more, the merrier. So how do we define enough goals? I define enough goals as the returns that clients need, not one, and can reliably, the keyword here is reliably achieve to enable their non-negotiable life goals. So we take it upon ourselves to make sure that we know very clearly the things that are non-negotiable and deliver enough returns to enable you to achieve these life goals. So that's the starting point. Now, once we know that enough returns, then how do we pursue delivering enough returns in a reliable way or in a way whereby it has the highest probability of success? Investment comes with a risk. But how do we do it so that we give our clients the highest probability of success? It starts first by examining, uh, examining empirical evidence to determine asset classes that can reliably give long-term expected returns. So that's the starting point. We look for evidence and we choose asset classes that has got a track record of giving you the long-term returns. Example, equities, yes. Bonds, yes. Cryptocurrency, not too much. Right? It may be a quote-unquote future asset class. However, there's not enough evidence to show that in the long term, it's going to give you that return. And we have been asked before, why don't include cryptocurrency? And that was when Bitcoin was skyrocketing. And I hope you are glad that we didn't because it doesn't pass that test. Right? Now, there's an article written on it. I have intentionally put an article just in case you are interested to read it because we did write an article on... Uh, our investment pillars, how we, how we choose those asset classes that pass the test. So we look at these asset classes, those asset classes that fits or pass the test. The next step for us is to use a scientific model to conservatively estimate the portfolio planning returns. That's what we do, right? And after we have done that, this is a very important step because we need this return to plan how much you need to save every year to reach your goal. Without this number, it's very hard to plan how much you should save. And if you just take any number out there, it's likely going to be wrong. Now, it's just an estimate, but we do our best to use a scientific model to estimate as accurately as possible or as conservatively as possible to help you plan to reach your goal. Right? And there's another article there. I'm going to read it, but if you're interested, there's an article written on it as well. After we have done that, then that's when we start to understand your non-negotiable life goals at different stages of your life, your Ikigai goals. And from that, we would be able to understand or know a few things. Firstly, we will be able to know how much returns you need to be able to reach your goal. That's the first thing we will know. Then, we would be able through that plan, through understanding your non-negotiable life goals, we would be able to know also your ability to take risks that are associated with the needed returns. Okay, because with the return you need, there's an associated risk. Right? And we want to know that you have the ability to take that associated risk. And of course, thirdly, it's your willingness to take risk that is associated with the needed returns. This is the tricky part. The willingness to take risk is the tricky part because it's influenced by a few things like investment education. Because if we don't understand investments, our willingness to take risk will be lower. They are unfamiliar. We've got bad experience in the past, then our unwillingness to take risk is there, or our willingness to take risk becomes higher, or, sorry, lower, right? So 
It's about your relationship with money. It's the psychological aspect of money, which is the tough part. But once we understand your need, ability, and willingness to take risks, we would then be able to find a suitable portfolio with its appropriate asset allocation that we think that you would be able to ride through the volatility. After we have done that, we then go and find instruments to execute the asset allocation. And again, we want to find suitable instruments that have evidence of reliably giving you that long-term return. There's also an article that we've written about it. Now, you will see that in every stage, we try to be as evidence-based as possible. Because remember, we are not looking for maximum returns. We are looking for the highest probability of getting you enough returns to be able to reach your non-negotiable life goals. It's contentment at play. Because if we are all just going for maximum returns, then it will be a very different story altogether. Okay? Currently, I mean, people always ask us why we only use a few, a few instruments. Is it because we are limited by our choices? The answer is no. Through all our platforms, Saxo, the private banks that we work with, even IFAS, it's an open architecture. We have many instruments that we can choose. But because of this test, finding suitable instruments that have evidence of reliably giving you long-term returns, we only limit ourselves to a few. Firstly, dimensional fund advisors. Currently, we also use iShares BlackRock Index Fund, and uh, soon to be, we announced that at our previous uh, annual client event, or our last, uh, annual client event last month, we're we'll using Amundi as well. Right? So that's how we do it. And of course, from time to time, we rebalance the portfolio. Why? Because after a while, the portfolio goes out of whack, then the, 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 the portfolio may no longer be suitable and you may not stay invested. So we always got to rebalance it back to that asset location that we know that you will stay invested for the long term. I do not know how much time I'm left with, but I just have got one any more animation to do. <laughs> because whatever I've said, they are just logic. Logically, you understand these things. But we all know that investment is not just about the head, it's about the heart. Because we can do this many, many times, but when the markets become very volatile, when we hear of wars, when pandemic comes, when our friend tells us this time is different, everything in the head goes away. And so there is a need to connect the head and the heart and how do we do it? Actually, we have done part of it in this process already. It is about creating the asset allocation after we understand the need ability. The need ability is the head part. The willingness is the metaphorical heart part. So we have designed the asset allocation such that not only your head will be able to take the risk, but your heart can take the up and down. But that's just one part. And there's another big thing that we do on an ongoing basis in something called Turbulence Management Plan. Turbulence Management Plan is a program that we design to tutor our clients' heart because our hearts need to be tutored. Because our hearts, they are worried when we hear things. Even though the head understands it, but when news comes, we get worried. So turbulence management plan is designed in such a way to tutor our client's heart and it starts even before you are onboarded. It starts before even you invest your money because there's, there's a lot of investment education, sharing of the investment philosophy, telling you that when you start investing with us, it's going to be a rough ride. We prepare you. And we liken it to you taking a flight. You know, each time you take a flight, although you have taken a flight many, many, many times, you go up there, the cabin crew will say the same old thing that well, be, you expect turbulence, and when turbulence happens, this is gonna, what we're going to do. And then when there are turbulences, the captain will co come through the mic and tell you, this is a turbulence, fasten your seatbelt. Now, we take that for granted. Imagine one day you take a flight, and there is a bad turbulence, and the captain is quiet. You'll be like wondering what's happening up there at the cockpit. So, turbulence management plan is a series of activities that we do to tutor our hearts. And it's like I said, it starts even before we onboard you. After I've said so much, all I wanted to tell you is tonight's event is part of Turbulence Management Plan. 
That's all I wanted to tell you, <laughs> right? But it's important I put this into context because when we curate the program, we don't just curate it without thinking. We are always thinking, how does it fit into turbulence management plan to tutor our clients hard? Because we have done everything possible from an evidence-based standpoint to give us the highest chance of reaching not the highest return. Someone told me recently that if they had invested in the S&P 500 ETF five, six years ago, they would have done better than our 100% equity portfolio. And the answer is factually true. It's correct. If you have just invested in the S&P 500, you would have done better. But is that the most reliable way? It may not be because it can be so volatile that people would have gotten out. Or the S&P 500 may not continue to do well in the next five years when you need the money. A lot of things can happen. It's not the most reliable way. And remember, we are not looking for the highest return. Uh, we just want to make sure that in the most reliable way, we give you the highest probability of getting you the returns you need to be able to achieve your non-negotiable life goals. We didn't plan this event knowing that there's going to be tension between Iran and Israel, we didn't. But I'm glad we do it. We did it tonight. Because all these things are coming. And I hope tonight, as you hear this, this is, you understand that it's just part of the things that we do to make sure that we help you weather through the uncertainties and the volatilities of the market so that we can sit tight. And because we have invested in the right things that have been curated through evidence, with evidence, you will get your returns when you need it.